this Rubik's Cube is teaching itself to solve itself. I created this 3D simulation using simple Python code, and in this YouTube series, I'll show you how to do it step-by-step -step with hands-on tutorials. We'll start by making a fully functional 3D simulation of a Rubik's Cube. Then, we'll use deep reinforcement learning to train it to solve itself. You can download the full code from the link in the description, but you won't need it. I'll guide you through every part of the project and explain the basic math along the way. By following this tutorial, you'll not only learn how to create an engaging 3D simulation, but also gain valuable insights into the exciting field of AI and machine learning. This project is perfect for enhancing your coding skills and exploring new frontiers in technology, so buckle up and get ready for a fun and educational coding adventure. Also, my channel's name might be a bit hard to remember, so if you don't want to miss any future videos, consider subscribing and turning on notifications. That way, you'll always have access to useful and informative coding tutorials. Before we dive into coding the main body of our project, let's start by creating a configuration file. This will be a simple Python file named configs.py, where we'll import the PyRay library, which is the Python binding for Raylib, and set up some basic configurations. These configurations will include window dimensions, frames per second, FPS, and camera settings. I'll explain the purpose of each of these as we progress through this series. Now, let's dive into the main code. We'll start by importing the Raylib bindings and our configuration file. Next, we initialize the window with the dimensions and title specified in our configuration file. This sets up the window where our 3D graphics will be displayed. We then set the target frames per second to ensure our program runs smoothly. Now, we enter the main loop. This loop will keep running until we close the window. Inside this loop, we update the camera position based on user input, allowing us to move around the 3D space. We start drawing our scene by clearing the background to a white color. This ensures that previous frames don't leave any artifacts on the screen. We switch to 3D mode and draw a grid to represent our 3D space. This grid will help us visualize the 3D environment and make it easier to position our Rubik's Cube. After drawing the grid, we end the 3D mode and finish the drawing. This sequence of commands ensures that everything is rendered correctly on the screen. What you see now in the screen is the base of our project. It's the environment in which we will build a fully functioning Rubik's Cube. In another file, we define the classes that make our Rubik's Cube. First, we start by importing the necessary libraries. Next, we define the cube class. This class represents each individual piece of our Rubik's Cube. The cube class has an initializer method that sets the size, center position, face color, and initial orientation of the cube. The initial orientation is represented by an identity matrix. An identity matrix is used for orientation because it represents a state with no rotation applied. This ensures that each cube piece starts in a standard, unrotated position, making it easier to apply transformations consistently. Inside the cube class, we have a method called GenMesh. This method generates the mesh for the cube using PyRay's GenMeshCube function. The generated mesh is stored in the mesh attribute of the cube object. Another method in the cube class is create model. This method creates a 3D model from the generated mesh using PyRay's load model from the mesh function. It also sets the position of the model using the matrix translate function, placing it at the specified center coordinates. Next, we define the Rubik class. This class is responsible for creating and managing the entire Rubik's cube. The initializer method of the Rubik class calls a method called generate Rubik. The generate Rubik method generates a single cube piece with a specified size and center position at the origin. 
This piece is created using the cube class we defined earlier. All that's left to do now is to use these classes. Let's return to dev.py, where our main code is located. First, import our Rubik class. Then, create an instance of it and call generate Rubik with size 1. This will generate one piece of our Rubik's cube. To draw this piece, convert its center coordinates into the vector 3 format. Then, pass this vector along with the piece model we created using a cube mesh, setting the size to 2 and the color to the piece's own color. By organizing our code in this way, we can easily extend it to create the entire Rubik's cube by generating and positioning multiple cube pieces. This is the first video in a series where we'll create a realistic Rubik's cube simulation using simple Python code, and then train it to actually solve itself using deep reinforcement learning. For now, we have a single piece that can be easily customized in size and color. In the next video, we'll expand this to build a complete Rubik's cube with colored faces, just like the real thing. My channel's name is a little bit tricky to memorize, so if you don't want to miss future videos, consider subscribing and activating the notifications. This way you'll get useful and informative coding tutorials all the time. Goodbye.